USB malware is still a thing. Secure your Apple ID with hardware keys and the Hive ransomware as a service gets disrupted. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for January 31st, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. My editor is on vacation this week, so if I miss anything while editing this video, that's why I'm a little rusty when it comes to editing ThreatWire, because she usually does it, so please give me some grace. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week. USB malware is not dead! I know, crazy, right? Researchers from Palo Alto Network's Unit 42 found a variant of malware that has been around for over a decade while they were responding to a ransomware attack. Now, the team later discovered a variant of this malware on VirusTotal as well. The malware in question is called PlugX, and since 2008, it has become a widespread tool for attacks. This newer variant can be used to make a USB flash drive malicious allowing it to spread infections to any Windows machines it connects to and potentially remain undetected long enough to spread to air-gapped machines by way of infecting other USB drives. Unit 42 found that this malware loads using a Windows debugging tool. The malware is hidden on a USB drive by adding a Unicode character. A Windows shortcut, which is .lnk file, is added to the root folder in order to execute the code needed to load the malware. And according to the team, the shortcut path to the malware contains a Unicode white space character, which is a space that does not cause a line break, but it is not visible via Windows Explorer. Now this is called a non-breaking space if you wanna Google it, and it is visible on Linux though. From here, a desktop.ini file is created and it just chills in that hidden directory. It is used to specify that shortcut file icon in the root directory, and a recycle bin directory icon is also added to root, but that is actually used to host the malware. So when a user clicks on the shortcut file, which looks like a drive icon, and it has the same name as the USB drive, that triggers the malware to launch Explorer, show all the normal looking files on the drive, and infect the device. Now, Windows Explorer does not show hidden files by default, and even if it does, the malware is hidden inside a recycle bin looking folder and they still don't get displayed even if that setting is disabled. So the best way to see if a drive is infected is by checking it with a forensics tool or viewing its contents in a Unix operating system. This news is very much a PSA for anyone that uses iOS devices. Apple just released iOS 16.3 last week and that finally comes with support for hardware keys for your Apple ID. Now, hardware keys have been supported for applications on iOS devices for a long time, but now you can also secure your Apple ID with one, which is a major upgrade from traditional 2FA, which sends you a six-digit code to confirm before allowing you to log into your account. Lately, we have seen lots of news about 2FA codes being stolen in phishing techniques, so this is a very positive upgrade. In order to add this to your account, go into your settings app, click on your name, password, and security, and then click add security key. Follow the on-screen directions to add your key. Now, Apple smartly requires that you add two security keys, so if you lose one, you can still log in with your secondary one. That's extremely important because Apple will not have any way to help you retrieve your account if you lose access. You can add up to six keys, by the way, but this is probably overkill for most people. You will need to add two keys at minimum in order to set up hardware security. Once that's done, you will be asked to review device devices that you are currently logged into and remove any as necessary. And if you lose a key, you can always remove them by going to the same page in your settings app. Several keys work with Apple ID, including Google's Titan and YubiKeys, and the newer Apple devices, including Macs, can support keys that have USB-C or NFC. While hardware keys are an upfront cost, the benefit of this at additional security will save you tons down the line. Biggest of shout outs to my Patreon supporters, especially my golden s'mores and their fur babies for making the show possible since we don't have ads on the show at all. So a huge thank you and a big shout out to Sean, Brandon, Michael, Strith, Darkspain, and Patrick for being a part of the s'mores at patreon.com slash Shannon Morris. 
This year, I will be migrating all perks and early access content over to my Morse Code Patreon page and combining the two accounts to make releases and perks for y'all more efficient. You can get ahead of this change by moving your pledge over to patreon.com slash Shannon Morse. You will still get all the perks associated with this Patreon with the added benefits of my Morse Code perks for the same membership prices. And for annual Threatwire pledges, I would recommend keeping your annual pledge active until closer to your resubscription date and then switching over. But let me know if you have any questions. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything else from tech reviews to security tutorials. This week, I'm actually explaining the LastPass hack in detail. So make sure to check out that video on my channel. It's a, it's a doozy. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well. But let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story, all about a Hive ransomware. So what is this Hive ransomware? Well, in a coordinated effort between multiple agencies and countries, including Europol and the US Department of Justice and the FBI, the Hive ransomware as a service infrastructure was infiltrated and seized. 336 decryption keys were distributed to affected companies and 1,000 decryption keys were provided to previous Hive victims. The ransomware gang was secretly infiltrated way back in July of 2022, and they been around for a couple years now, they were infiltrated by the FBI, monitored for six months with two servers and one virtual private server accessed. These were hosted by a US provider and they were leased to three email addresses that belonged to members of Hive. Two backup servers were also accessed in the Netherlands by their local police. So the seizure notification on the Hive site lists other countries, including Germany, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and several more as contributing to its takedown. These domains were used for data leaking, negotiations, and more. The agencies used the infiltration to warn targets before they were hit and learn about attacks. The US DOJ also disclosed that they found information on about 250 Hive affiliates, and they are offering up to $10 million in rewards for information that can help link Hive members to foreign governments. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet.